Quick, what's your phone number? Recite it. Don't check your phone. Okay. Now, what are your parents' phone numbers? Don't check your phone. Recite it right now. Have I lost people already? Hi. Welcome to another episode of Unlocking the Mind Behind Make More Workless. My name is Fong Chua. I'm an entrepreneur, business strategist, real estate investor, speaker, and also a best-selling author. And every single day, I help others unlock the potentials and guide them to succeed. Today on Unlocking the Mind, we talk about another common bias. And the reason why I have this show is so that we can better understand how our minds work, make better decisions, build stronger relationships, and of course, avoid certain kind of traps. So for today's common bias, let me ask you a question. Do you remember a time when you can remember five? 10, 50, maybe even 20 phone numbers right off the top of your head. You want my friend? No problem. Blah, 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 blah. You want my parents? No problem. Blah, 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 blah. You can remember those digits, no problems. You basically have a song or rhythm to remember that number. How about now? How many of those numbers do you actually still remember? Probably not many. How many addresses do you remember? How about email address do you remember off the top of your head? Probably not many. And why? Well, that's because of the Google effect or the digital amnesia. So what exactly is that? That is the tendency for to forget information that is readily available through search engines or Google. But this concept has been around for a long, long time. Basically, once technology has come into play, we tend to stop memorizing certain things. We tend to start relying on technology. We start to uh, rely on uh, computers for information because we know we don't have to remember all that stuff anymore. And that is the Google effect. That is digital amnesia. Now, lots of studies has been done on this effect, and uh, three main things has come out from these studies. The number one thing is that people tend to kind of lean towards computers right off the bat, even if they know 100% what the answer is. When you ask a question, you kind of first instinctively go towards, oh, let me check Google. Oh, let me check the computer. Oh, let me check it online. And you tend to kind of be less confident with regards to your own memory. For instance, who played Han Solo in the original Star Wars? Is it Harrison Ford? I'm pretty sure it is. I'm 100% it is. But just in case, let me check on Google. Let me check IMDb. Even though if you're 100% sure, you start to kind of rely on computers and technology because that's where all the information is. The second thing that's come up from all these studies is that we generally tend to not remember things if we know that that information is readily available if we go search for it. And that's just because we don't want to cram our minds with all of this useless information if we don't actually have to remember it. So for instance, with the phone numbers, we used to have to remember all that kind of stuff because then we have to go to our phone books, we have to go find our address books, uh, we search. it's more faster if we just memorize it. And sometimes when you have a rhythm or a song to it, it's a lot faster and more efficient just to memorize it. But now you don't even need that. You just have to say the name or, or press a speed dial and it goes right directly to those people. You don't even have to remember that number because we know it's there. If we really, really wanted to, we'll just click on the information and you can have the entire number there. We know it's readily available and we know where to find it. And that leads us to the third thing that we found uh, when it comes to these studies. And that is we tend to know exactly where things are put, but we don't exactly know what we actually put in there. So for instance, let me ask you this question. Back in the day, where did you put some of your most cherished memories? Your photos, your trinkets, where did you put those? In this box, underneath your bed, at the far corner? You know exactly where it is. But if I was to ask you, can you recall every single little bit of information that's in that box? You probably couldn't. Because once you open that box, you go, oh, look at this, I remember this. Oh, look at that, I remember this. And that's because we tend to remember better where we put things instead of what we actually put into those things. So therefore, when we know that the internet or Google has all this information and everything stored there, and we know that it's going to be there, we know exactly where to look for it. And therefore, we tend to not remember it. So what are some of the disadvantages with regards to the Google effect? Well, the disadvantage is something that I alluded to before. We tend to start relying a lot more on technology, relying a lot more on computers and our phones, and we stop memorizing things with our minds. Our minds stop to, uh, stop to have that ability to memorize things quickly or be as sharp as it used to be. And that's because we just rely on computers. Just imagine this. Imagine if I told you to go to a certain destination, but you don't have a map, you don't have Google, you don't have your phone. How are you going to get there? Well, you're going to have to rely on asking for directions. And you have to memorize those directions from other people. Just imagine what kind of nightmare that would be. 
where right now all you have to do is, hey, Google, take me here and we'll give you the exact location, the exact path. But now we don't, we stopped memorizing all those different uh, routes and all those different paths to certain locations because we have Google. So that is one thing that is a disadvantage to us. We stop uh, relying on our minds. We are really, really reliant on the computers. The second thing is we tend to just uh, give the benefit of the doubt that everything is going to be there. And because we give that benefit of the doubt, we stop relying on our own abilities to find things on our own. We tend to re stop relying on our own abilities to remember certain facts, certain information that might be actually important. But we go, you know what? It's probably going to be there, and therefore we'll find it if we really need it. And the last thing that tends to be a negative is that we stop having confidence in ourselves. As I said at the number one, we kind to uh, rely on computers and technology, and we stop having that self-confidence in our own minds and our own abilities to memorize stuff or to know actual information that we actually do know. So as that keeps on going, we tend to just deteriorate our minds. We, our minds are less sharp. Uh, our minds are not worked as hard. And therefore, that makes us slow. Uh, that makes us more inefficient. And we're just more mindless drones after a while. But it allows us to uh, realize that that is some of the disadvantages of the Google effect. And once we understand that that is some of the disadvantages of it, we can actually make it work for us. So for, for instance, the great Henry Ford, Back in the day, he was accused of being a person who, uh, who, who isn't a great leader or isn't a great business person because he didn't know certain facts about history. He didn't know certain facts about uh, one industry or another industry until he actually went, you know what, why am I wasting all my time memorizing and remembering all this stuff if I can just use a push of a button and ask somebody who actually knows that information, allowing him to free up his mind to do a whole bunch of other stuff. So if we know that if we continually rely on technology and forget a whole bunch of stuff about memorization and whatnot, well, if we know that, we can utilize that to our advantage and utilize that space that, that we've now opened up to learn more stuff, to seek out more opportunities, to use more creativity, to expand our minds, to expand our knowledge, because now knowledge is all over the place. We can learn so much more. And because we know where to find it, it's all on search and it's all on Google. We can actually expand our minds so much more than we could have before when we were actually cramming our minds with so much other information that is now just stored somewhere we could always find it. So don't fall prey to the Google effect from a negative perspective. Utilize the Google effect so that we can expand our minds even further, making ourselves more efficient, more sharp, and even more opportunistic when it comes to finding opportunities out there. So that is the Google effect. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please go back and watch some of my other episodes on Unlocking the Mind. And if you like Unlocking the Mind, we have a lot of other shows. The Peak Potential Success Show, the Make More Mind Bites, and of course, the Master Mind Bites that's up every single week. Thank you very much for your support, your likes, your viewing, your time, and your subscriptions, your comments. I love seeing those comments. And until next time, today is the day to unlock your peak potential. I'll see you later.